Okay, <coughs> we'll continue to talk about equivalent principle. <coughs> so if an accelerator frame, say XRA up with XRA A, is equivalent to a, a linear frame in a gravitational field with G equal to minus A. <coughs> now, uh, for the mechanics, this is really no different from just say uh, inertia mass equal to gravitational mass, but given a name, the equivalence principle, uh, so in order to focus on it, so we can be generalized from mechanics to electromagnetism, for example, we can derive gravitational time dilation and gravitational deflection of light. Uh, uh, and uh, so the extension is the uh, case we call strong equivalent principle. But even in mechanics, even for mechanics, equivalent principle still can be helpful to understand uh, certain phenomena. It's a lot easier to, 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 to see the results uh, than going through the mechanic calculation in, uh, <coughs> using inertia mass to gravitational mass. I'll give you two examples of this application of the weak equivalent principle below. First of all, uh, I could talk about a car accelerating inside there's a balloon here, and uh, with all the window roll up and the car accelerating to the to the left, let's say. And the question is whether when you accelerate to the left, whether the balloon will lean backwards or to the right, or uh, when you accelerate to the left, the balloon lean forward or uh, lean towards the left also. Okay. And it turns out equivalent principle can help to decide which one is 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 the is the right uh, right result. And the, first of all, we could do the experiment. We can actually take a balloon in the car and see which way it, it leans. So here I'm in the car with a balloon <laughs> tied to the to the floor, and uh, I'm going to uh, accelerate and then see whether the balloon lean forward or backwards and then I can right away break because that would decelerate and whether again which direction so normally uh, our normal experience would expect when I accelerate the balloon will lean backwards and when I decelerate the balloon will lean forward and but uh, uh, Unfortunately, this video is very short. So right away, I can accelerate, and right away, I'm going to decelerate. As, <clears throat> and unfor unfortunately, there's not much reference points. Hard to see when I'm accelerating, decelerating. But anyway, so first part, I'm, I can accelerate, and then the second part, I can decelerate. Okay, I'm accelerating. The balloon lean forward. Then I now I'm trying to break out. The balloon lean backwards. Okay, and so, unfortunately, sure. Uh, so it looks like uh, actually the the balloon behaves somewhat counterintuitively. Uh, normally, you would expect something to lean backward; it's actually lean forward. And the, when it decelerates, just again in the opposite direction. Okay, let's see. Let's let's watch it again. Okay, first I'm going to accelerate and balloon lean forward. Then I put the brake on, and the, the balloon actually linked backwards. Okay. So, looks like the balloon will lean forward when uh, in an accelerating car. <laughs> so it's simple to explain. Remember, the balloon is floating because of buoyancy. And the buoyancy is always opposite to gravity, right? The how buoyancy works, if you have a volume, and let's say it's the same, with the same fluid, and the the, uh, the force, upward force, downward force, exactly cancel. So if you replace the volume by a lighter, like helium, and uh, so so there will be, uh, so you, uh, all outside force is exactly the same, so therefore it will push upwards because the less weight. Okay, so but anyway, the point is that the buoyancy is always opposite to gravity. Now, <clears throat> for equivalent principle, we know when I'm accelerating, I will have A, equivalent, there's 
if the effective gravitation force in the opposite direction. Okay, so so there's a g prime is equal to minus a. This Dick's experiment can be thought that I have a g prime equal to minus a, and then of course normal grav gravitational force. So these the sum of these two components give you an effective gravitation force which is slanted. So therefore, buoyancy is opposite to that. So so therefore. <coughs> The balloon will lean forward, and of course, when decelerate, exactly the opposite. Anyway, I think it's uh, uh, it's for fun to, I think you should get a balloon and put it in a car and tie it and roll up your window and uh, and of course the whole thing to roll the window because you see the whole pocket air in the car allows you to to provide the buoyancy. If you leave the window open, it's all kinds of other factors uh, will not work. Okay, the second application, something I call Einstein toy. Uh, it's a gadget that I can also use to demonstrate equivalent principle. Actually, uh, Einstein's neighbor in Princeton, Eric Roger, who is, uh, who is a famous instructor at Princeton University who does all kinds of demonstrations, presented Einstein for his uh, 76th birthday, uh, a present, birthday gift, okay, which is basically uh, Something like a uh, like a plunger, a bowl, and that holds uh, and the ball is the exact size it fits in, and they connect it with a spring. Okay. <clears throat> the game is that how do you pop this ball into the bowl? Okay. And normally, of course, you know the two forces: the spring force and also gravity. Okay. And the the, the, the challenge is that I want you to able to do this pop back, even though it's not hard, but it's uh, but normally you have to align these two forces. The question is, how can you pop it back to the ball each for sure? You know, so a sure way to succeed each time that you can pop it back. Okay, And of course, suggest by equivalent principle. And the equivalent principle suggests the thing is drop the whole contraption. If you drop the thing that's in free fall, then there's no gravity. <laughs> there's no gravity in free fall. It's just enough to align. It's only a spring force, so the spring will always pull the ball back. Okay. Uh, let me uh, uh, again do a demo. Uh, here's what I, in fact, this setup is given to me uh, Tuesday in my relative class five years ago, and they after the class they made this the same for me, which is very nice. Uh, what they used is uh, instead of a, a metal spring, use a rubber uh, tube. Uh, unfortunately, as time goes on, the, the rubber tube loses elasticity, so it doesn't draw back as fast. So it takes takes a little moment for the spring or the, the rubber to, uh, to to pull the ball back. But anyway, it still can be done. Okay, here I'm trying to show this. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna drop the whole thing, and the cops pass right back. Okay, I can drop the whole thing. There's no gravity, and it, the spirit, the rubber pulls right back to the ball. Okay. So, how do we know that this Einstein got this uh, <coughs> 76th birthday? Well, because uh, because there was an article written in Scientific American by a uh, historian of science, uh, <coughs> Bernard Cohen, who actually interviewed Einstein uh, just two weeks before Einstein died in 1955. And so uh, in this article, he explained after the interview, about an hour and a half interview, two hours, and he was leaving, and uh, then he noticed that something in Einstein's, the corner of the study, uh, in fact, the curtain rod and uh, was, uh, was a ball with uh, some funny things. And I said, oh, you know, that's my, uh, my neighbor uh, gave me this uh, birthday present and illustrated the principle of, uh, uh, of <coughs> equivalent principle. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I said, apparently really very fond of this, this, this toy. <coughs> and we know about it through this Scientific American article. 